Hi, I'm Amanda Hoffman. I'm here today to teach you all about productivity and profit. So what I'm going to tell you is grab yourself a tea or a coffee, sit down, relax with a snack, because this is going to be chock packed with practical points that anybody can use in their business so that their cash flow can become more positive, that their clientele can be targeted. And I even go into the everyday nuts and bolts of how to keep all your accounts reconciled in easy terms that anybody can understand. So get ready, Prosper's got you all sorted out and he's ready to roll. So here we go and I'll leave it to him to introduce the following. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the cloud accountant herself, Amanda. Amanda, how are you doing today? Awesome, Prosper. How are you? Fantastic. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Now, obviously, if you're watching this right now, you would understand we're always bringing you experts in their own space. And um, you would be surprised what Amanda actually specializes in. Her work involves um, cloud accounting, mobile and flexible technology that can be used anywhere and at any time. We were just joking earlier on before we started recording that I can't see which cloud might be containing all the accounting data that um, her clients might be having. So obviously if you are, um, if you haven't been living under a rock, you would understand that if you operate from the cloud, it gives you the business owner more freedom to complete data entry with a click of a photo from a smartphone or a tablet. And you can actually reconcile your account while you're waiting for, um, you know, your doctor's appointment at the doctor's surgery, or you can email a text invoice in between jobs and bookkeeping no longer has to be just about tax compliance. And Amanda actually loves to educate you and you know about how you can read your financial reports, examine your cash flow and help your business uh, to be more productive and more profitable. Now, Amanda, I could go on and on, but you're the expert in all of this. Tell us a little bit about how, how you got started and what exactly is cloud accounting? I got started initially because I got tired of my husband, who's an electrical contractor, not having enough time for me. We were young, we were just newly married and I just got fed up. So I said to him, how about I help you with your accounting? Now, back in those days, we had um, probably a 386 computer, very, very rudimentary, and a typewriter. And that's how we used to do everything for him. And as you know now, things have evolved. So his mates got to hear that I was doing my husband's accounts and they all wanted in. So in 2008, I started my office books, my own bass agency, basically. And from there, I've just built my business. I think the biggest secret I can tell any business owner or entrepreneur is the need to evolve. So in our industry of accounting, it is constantly evolving. So I went from using a typewriter to a computer, to using desktop software, to then having to evolve into something called zero software. Now I was really, really skeptical prosper i just thought you know what i'm gonna prove this stuff's wrong so i made the decision that with a very large client who had multiple properties that had about a dozen properties i was going to break zero by using it with receipt bank so i took it away from my old version 19 which was the then desktop version that was being used and I transferred all, all the data for the new financial year to zero to receipt bank because I was going to break it. To my absolute surprise and shock, I saved a hundred hours of work a month by doing that. Wow. So I guess that's where business people today really need to real, realize that while it's important to look at what they're doing with their industry, they also need to look at the secrets of automation because gone are the days that we're a bookkeeper. We're not a bookkeeper anymore. We're actually a digital integrator where our job is to help small business people understand the tools they can use to automate the processes. Now, a lot of bookkeepers won't like me saying this, but if they are trained properly and set up correctly, 
you don't actually need a bookkeeper if you're on one man band or if it's your wife and husband business or you just got a handful of staff. If you're trained properly and you automate your processes in accounting, you really then need your bookkeeper to help you with problem solving, um, more technical assistance and ensuring that you have the latest in technology. So they should be a consultant and advisor going forward over the next five years. And the old bookkeeper that sits there typing will be a dinosaur. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you so much for enlightening us with all of that. Um, I mean, obviously people would rather go to a dentist and have a root canal without any anesthetic than visit um, a bookkeeper. Is it what you're trying to say that it's because of the whole traditional setup that a bookkeeper is always um, flooded with paperwork and it just gives anxiety to the entrepreneur as soon as they step into their office. I think what's the biggest problem with a lot of entrepreneurs is they're really good at what they do, but they leave the hard stuff alone. So if you're an entrepreneur where you just want to focus on your clients and your passion, and you know you're not going to do your bookkeeping, then that's where you really do need to get a good bookkeeper or a cloud accountant or a business coach that has connections with bookkeeping and get them to do it for you. Because at the end of the day, how can you as an entrepreneur make a decision about going forward with the business if you don't understand what the bottom line is? Um, you know, things such as a lot of entrepreneurs will do lots of subscriptions. They're looking for the bright, shiny object. So they'll be on Zapier. They'll be on their accounting software. They'll have their CRM system because they want to keep in contact with all the different touches they have for people. They'll have email. They'll have their phones and they'll have all these little apps on their phones. But what they're not doing is they're not getting all those applications to actually talk to each other. They may be fragmented. And so when it comes to the end of the day, they're wondering, well, why am I having to spend 20 hours a day just trying to keep on top of everything? And if they are, then I would have to ask them this very, very important question. Have you seriously sat down and analysed what you're doing? Is what you're using integrated? For example, if you're using a CRM, the CRM should integrate with your online accounting software so that the moment that you put a new customer on your CRM or in your so accounting software, it already populates that information automatically to your CRM. And if there isn't a connection or integration, you should be looking at getting somebody on Fiverr maybe or Odesk and helping them integrate if this then that or Zapier so that as soon as you do one thing, it actually goes and flows through a whole process of other situations, such as if you go ahead and you've got a new client and you put it into your CRM, it should then zap into your accounting program to say what their details are. So it's already there waiting for you to be able to do an invoice. Or uh, alternatively, if you're using a system where you've got, mail, you've got MailChimp, then it should automatically zap into your mail chip so that they're getting updates with your newsletter. So it can be simple little processes and recipes that you set up like that, where you're not actually having to sit there and three times type in the details. That's a waste of your time. And you know, it's just simple little processes and, and analyzing what you're doing to help you save time by doing things that are simple like that. Absolutely. Um, Amanda, when I reached out to you, I was looking for an accounting professional. I did not realize I had uh, actually contacted a digital strategist and, <laughs> and the technology <laughs> and, and PGS. So this is actually really interesting and it actually really takes away um, the whole traditional feel of what accounting used to be like because I would have thought we we're going to be talking about T accounts and ledgers and, um, you know, <laughs> left left cycle but now you yeah, you could take away my job if you wanted to <laughs> no i think what i'm trying to um show is while the finances are really really important you need to understand what your balance sheet said you need to understand what is an asset 
and why it goes into the asset column. Um, why, if you get a business loan or if you get a higher purchase or a lease on a car, why that's actually a liability and then how that reflects onto your profit and loss. So as an entrepreneur, you really do need to have a bookkeeper or an accountant that is willing to spend the time to teach you what those things are. Um, probably as an example, I had a client that was a landscaper. Now, he really wanted to build his business so that he wasn't always having to do the work in doing the landscaping. So I made sure that every time Baz came round, we put aside at least 15 minutes and I would sit there and show him certain little points on his profit and loss. So he understood what he was looking at. And I also encouraged him and I encourage all entrepreneurs, if you are not putting aside one day a month to sit down and look at your business. I mean, actually sit down, grab your profit and loss, Go and do the report that's called your, your old accounts, your payables. Look at your receivables. Print those reports out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, ask your accountant to show you what these are. And then you go ahead and look at how, with your profit and loss, what is outstanding with your customers, and then see about contacting them, touching base, getting in your car even and driving around and saying, you're going to be picking up the money because cash flow is your blood flow. If your business does not have the cash and you're having to find you need a line of credit to dip into to pay your bills, then you've got a sick business. And what you need to do is you don't stress about it and go, oh my goodness, I'm in a bad situation with my cash flow. You need to ask yourself, have you sat down and gone back to basics? And the basics are, while it's great to look at your balance sheet, great to look at your profit and loss, it's the clientele you're focusing on. Now, if you're dealing with clients who are really bad payers, then you need to have a look and analyze, are they your ideal client? So it goes back again, another step, where you as a business person have to say, well, what's my ideal client? Client. What do they look like? What are they wearing? Do they have children? Do they not have children? Are they living in suburbia or aren't they living in suburbia? Get really personal and then look at what you're doing to target those people. Are they on YouTube? Are they on Facebook? Are they really into technology and they like Twitter because it's fast and really quick? And then look at what you're doing with your newsletter and are you actually targeting the right clientele? So for instance, with my husband's business, he was struggling. He was working 18 hours a day and still not being able to pay his mortgage and everything else. So he went to a business coach and the business coach looked at his clients and said, you know, you're too cheap. Your hourly rate and everything you're doing is you're targeting the wrong type of clientele. These are the people you need to target. So what he did was he made this decision. I want these people. Now, where are these particular clients? So he went to the hardware stores. He went to his wholesale suppliers. He left his business card with them and said, if they buy these products, I'm available to do installations. He found that domestic work, doing PowerPoints and things for residential properties was not where the money was. So he kept those clients until basically he built his other clientele, which were industrial and commercial field. And he found that they had warehouses, they had machinery, they had parts they couldn't find or be able to purchase. So he then got his layabout and he made those parts so that they fit into their machinery and did the electrical installations and repairs. And he changed his business from being only five figures a year, he changed it to being six figures a year. And he put on five business guys in their trucks and his business was booming. But then he found that the staff and everything were killing him and he was only on bare wages and they were being paid more than him. So that's when he had to step back again and look at his circumstances. And he realized he could make a quarter of a million dollars 20 years ago by sacking all his staff and just working for himself and specializing in industrial work. And that's what he did. So rather than earning at 35 thousand a year which he was with five boys and five trucks on the road and having to do recalls and kill himself he then had to realize that it was time to suck the five boys get rid of the trucks go back to himself and he was turning over two hundred and fifty thousand clear profit a year
So that's what I really want to bring out to the entrepreneurs that are listening to this particular episode is having really good accounts, excellent cash flow. That's all well and good. But if you don't have cash flow, why I've given you these examples, it's time for you to stop, breathe, sit back and take the time and make sure that you're targeting the right clients, that you're making sure that you have terms when it comes to dealing with these people that they have to pay you. And in many cases with my husband, he's all do and charge now. He doesn't quote. All the work is he goes there, he does the work, he charges. And that's because he's got that familiarity and that trust with his clients. And that's what every entrepreneur should actually seek for. You want to have a reputation as somebody that's honest and trustworthy. So they're not questioning you and wanting you to quote before you do things because they're frightened you're going to do the wrong thing by them. You need to have that credibility by making sure that when you say you're going to be somewhere, you're always there. And this is where you're going to attract those prime ideal clients where cash flow doesn't become an issue anymore because you're targeting the right type of people. Absolutely. And thank you so much for that in and of itself is a business lesson. And I also think it comes with marriage advice because I think all you really need to succeed is to just have a wife that understands maths. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I could hear from there. And now looking at your husband and how he has, you know, managed to grow from a 35 um, year, a year, you know, uh, income to a quarter of a million. And now you guys, um, as you were telling me earlier, are almost about to retire in the next year. And good on you for having achieved that uh, financial um, sort of independence. Now, just taking it back a little bit, Amanda, um, a lot of uh, people that will be starting off in business, let's say maybe uh, in the stage that your husband was at, he probably would have started off as a hobby and they would not have, you know, maybe known as um, how to then take it into yet another step to making it into uh, a business, you know, and, and as the ATO specifies, they say that a hobby is an outside interest that you pursue for fun in your spare time. But normally these days, um, people are starting to make money with their hobbies. How do you help, um, advise people to consolidate, you know, that, okay, it's normal fun and games. Now you got to be serious and actually start becoming productive and profitable. So if we're going to go back to the bare foundations, depending on what their cash flow is, they can start keeping an idea of what they're spending, what their income is and their expenses are purely by using Excel spreadsheet on Google, on Google itself. So you use a Google Drive function, Google Word, you have an Excel spreadsheet and you go ahead and you put in columns. You go what my income is and every time you do a job and invoice somebody, if you're just doing it really basics, you don't want to pay for a subscription or anything, you just make sure that you're religious at the end of each day of work while you're still on the car. Because it's online, you just put all the details in there. And you use maybe Dropbox, there's an app that's free and you can actually just take photos of all the receipts. So, you know, there's that option. However, the ATO has my deductions. So the ATO actually has a free app that you can go onto the website and you can download onto your phone. Now that app would do just what I've said, what you can do in Google Word and with the, the Dropbox. So the, the, my deductions lets you take photos and then it actually puts it into an Excel spreadsheet you can actually put all your income and you can also do your logbook, which is the other thing I want to remind people that once you go from being a situation where you're earning more than $18,000 a year, you have to pay tax. So that's where you need to have, make sure you have an ABN, you have a business name. Now, when you have an ABN in Australia, they are actually looking at people to see whether you really are a contractor and they're doing an audit. So within three months, like with my son, you'll get somebody who'll ring you up and ask you, are you really in business? Uh, are you, do you really have this ABN? And at that time, they're going to want you to do certain business aspects. So this is where you're starting to evolve from being somebody that's a hobby into a business person. And to prove that you're actually a business, you will need a website URL. You'll need to have registered a business name. You'll need to have a business card, have a letterhead, or have a logo. 
You will need to have tax invoices in place. You will need to show and document that you're actually a proper business. And these are some of the tools they're going to ask you to prove that you should have that ABM. And that's something as a business person you should make sure that you have. Even if you don't get audited for the ABM, you need to make sure that you're appearing in a business-like manner. So on your business card, you should have your ABM. On your tax invoice, you should have an ABM. It, and if you're not turning over enough to be registered for GST, which is $75,000 or more in Australia, then you should still have your ABN there because they need your ABN to put into their system to show that you're actually should be getting those invoices. They need to be able to justify that you're a business person that you're, and they need to have that invoice to be able to get the expenses on their end. So these are the things that you need to do that are the basics. And once you've done that, you download the My Deductions. It's probably the easiest thing to do. You put everything in. You just use your mobile phone and you go to Officeworks or if you get your fuel, you just take a photo and you type in what it is. At the end of the year, what My Deductions allows you to do is you can actually then email to your accountant for your end of year tax an Excel spreadsheet that will have everything in there. Now, at this stage, this is for people who are sole contractors who don't have registration of GST. So once you hit 75,000, you're really starting to have credibility here. This is where you really need to make sure that you've got your business hat on. And this is where you need to evolve into a software program that's in the cloud because that's going to allow you to use an app very similar to what you're doing with the My Deductions, but it's going to allow you to keep an accurate record of your GST, what you're paying and what you're actually earning. Now, when you get to this point, the next step is bank reconcile. The one thing 75% of business people who come to me do not do is they tell me, I do bank reconciliation. They don't. And what is a bank reconciliation? When you put all your data in, what your expenses are, what you put all your income in, you've got your invoices, they're all going to be either paid or be deducted out of a credit card or your business account. Now, here I want to stop. If you do not have a separate account for all your business, that is the one thing that I would like you to take from today. Stop using personal and business in one account. There are two reasons for that. Number one, when the ATO audits you, they are looking to see if you mix your business with your personal. And they clap their hands, rub them together and go, they know they're going to get some money out of you because you would have done something wrong. Not deliberately, but it gets really confusing when you mix personal and business. So make sure if you have a credit card and if you have a business account, it is solely for that business. If you're living off the money and you need to withdraw all the money on a weekly basis to put into your personal account to pay the bills, do so. But in the business account and in the credit card, the only thing you should have in there are transfers and business expenses and business income. If you do that, that's going to make your life when you bank reconcile much easier. And a bank reconciliation is that once you've done all your data, it's all in your accounting program, be it QuickBooks, Sage, Myob, Zero. It doesn't matter what accounting program. The principle is the same. You get your physical bank statement from the bank. And then you're going to sit down with that on one side and you're going to have your accounting program on the other. Now, you're going to go into something, depending on what software, it's going to be in a different place. You're going to click on bank reconciliation and you're going to put in what the closing balance is and you'll see the closing balance on your credit card or the closing balance of your bank statement. And then you're going to type that into the bank reconciliation and then you're going to put the last date that's on your bank statement and you're going to copy that into the software program and then you're going to press either run or proceed or whatever it is the button says and it should balance. So what I'm saying is when, you, when you're doing the right thing and everything's being recorded correctly, you're going to find that if your ba end balance on the 30th of November was 10,205, you're gonna see that the bank reconciliation when you click through all the transactions are going to be the 10,205. Why is this important? How can you know if your GST that you're lodging with your BAS is accurate if you don't do a bank reconciliation?
In a lot of accounting programs, it's easy to double up with your income. So you may find that you're paying double the GST than you should be because you haven't done your bank reconciliation. Or alternatively, you might have left out transactions. Or maybe there was a problem with the National Australia Bank one day and it missed all the transactions for that particular day. So all the income and all the expenses you paid aren't actually showing up as being so in your reports. So that then throws your bass out. And that then throws out your end of year finances with your tax side of things. So these are the basics that you need to do as a business owner. And as you can tell, I'll go back, when you're just going from 18,000 and you're starting business, you need to get an ABN and you need to get a business name. You need to have your business card and letterheads to show that you're a real business. And if you use my deductions or you use Google Drive, that's fine. Do that to save yourself money. Once you start getting close to 75,000, you're going to know this because you're keeping the records, then you're going to go to an accounting program. Once you get onto that accounting program, my advice is even if you want to do your own bookkeeping, get a certified advisor. And a certified means somebody that's done the time, they've got a badge from the software program to say they know what they're doing. So you're going to get them to set it up for you. So you know the GST and your chart of accounts, and how you do your expenses and how you do your income, they're going to set all that up for you. So that you should have your logo and everything there because they'll do that with the setup. Then you can go ahead and do all your data. You're going to put the app on your phone so you're using it when you're out and about. And then when you get home at the end of the week, and I advise most people should put aside 15 minutes at the end of the week, make sure that you've taken all the photos of your receipts, that you check your what's happening with your bank and you click all those off to make sure that you've done that side. And then when your bank statement comes, though I like to do it on a weekly basis, when your bank statement comes, be it monthly, um, and I advise to do it monthly even if you have quarterly bank statements, change it to monthly because it's easier for you to keep on track. Do your bank reconciliation, like I said, and once you've done that and get into a habit of doing that, then when it comes to your quarterly BAS time to do your BAS, it's gonna be very easy because you know that everything balances, you know that everything's okay, and if you have any problems, you can get help before it becomes too big. So how's that? Is that kind of what you're after, Prosper? Absolutely, absolutely. Did you see I was taking notes and I was like in a accounting lecture here, so for, if anything, um, I would think that the people that are watching right now have gotten so much value and um, you've made it so simple and made it so um, easy to digest. And um, it's unlike anything I've ever heard before, even though um, we've been doing that for quite a while within the business. So I really, really do appreciate you dropping it like that. Now, I mean, obviously some people would have been like, you know what? I think Amanda is my kind of girl. I really want to find out how exactly um, I can get ahead in business, become productive and actually become profitable because you make it seem very, very easy. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Amanda? I'm all over social media. So if you go to Twitter, if you go to Facebook, if you go to Instagram, just look for My Office Books. Um, you can follow me on My Office Books and you're more than welcome to message me. Um, I'm online, so you can go to myofficebooks.info and you can see my, my, my mobile number, which is 0423463721, or you can email me at info at myofficebooks.com. So it's pretty simple to contact me. There's lots of different avenues. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, we might be having some people that are just sitting, you know, uh, and watching this video and, you know, uh, twiddling their thumbs and going, uh, yeah, you know, I'll get around to it when the time comes or it's, it's, it's not important for me. I, I know what I do best. You know, uh, the whole accounting thing is not my thing. What sort of advice do you give to people um, that are letting themselves go and their business go in the, at the same time? Well, I, I guess the one thing I've learned for us to be able to get ahead, to be able to buy investments is how can you know that you can afford to be able to expand your business or buy a rental property or put it into shares or anything else you're doing if you don't know where you are today. 
So you can't get to tomorrow or your future without knowing where you stand today. So that's where you really need to bite the bullet and stop procrastinating. So you, so you just start. The biggest thing I tell anybody is just start. And if just starting is getting a folder and putting all your receipts in there and making sure that you've got all your invoices in one area, then that's a start. But then the next step is get somebody to do it for you. So, and if you're looking for somebody that's good, ask. These days, we're all on Facebook, we're all on social media. And if you don't trust your friends are bookkeeping or accounting references, ask people online. Say to them, who do you think is good and why are they good? And see what they say. And if a person's name comes up more than once, well, then they're well worth looking at. And then give them a call and, and see if they can do all the bookkeeping for you. Because not everybody likes doing finances particularly if you're creative, if you're a dancer or if you're a child's sort of industry where you're doing things with children or if you're doing things artistic and you're a painter or you're an actor or whatever, I find creatives don't like finances. And in fact, sometimes unless they've got that side of them, they're better off just giving it to somebody. And then at least if they want to buy their first home or if they want to get an investment property or they want to go into shares, then it's always good to have a team of specialists. So it's not good just to have an accountant. It's, you need a bookkeeper because bookkeepers are more economical than accountants normally unless they've got a fixed price package. Um, have a financial advisor that gives you ideas, um, educates you. And then, of course, you need a business lawyer if you're going to really turbocharge. And so your professional team are the ones that you go to lunch with. You shout them out to lunch as well as see them because it's in those instances that they actually share with you what's happening that you can get those epiphany or those aha moments. So it's, it's a whole process. It's a process of having good accounts, knowing where you are, knowing where you want to be, surrounding yourself with people who are successful that are going to help you get there and also focusing on your ideal client so that the cash flow keeps coming through. And if you can focus also on your passion, then you're never going to work a day in your life because you're going to have lots and lots of fun through the journey. Absolutely. I love that aspect of not having to work a day in, uh, in your life. I mean, as you would understand, Amanda, with your experience and your time uh, in and around uh, working with businesses, you'd understand people would rather talk about sex than talk about their finances. And I can't thank you enough for having it, for having laid it bare, um, you know, for us here on the show today and, and made it, uh, made it very, very easy. I've just actually, uh, realized that you can actually reconcile your bank account while you're waiting at the doctor's surgery or email or text uh, invoice in between jobs. And it's so easy. If you can just rewind back to this tape, you will find out that, um, you know, you, you're only doing yourself a disservice if you are not looking into your finances, because how, how are you going to know how to proceed when you don't know where you actually are? right now now amanda i can't thank you enough for your time your generosity and the level of expertise that you dropped on the show today um it's 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 been it's it's appreciated my pleasure and, and like i said if anyone wants to just ask me any questions just do it by any of those social media areas and i'm more than happy to share a link or send them somewhere and help them where i can absolutely thank you so much